All right, everybody, it's time to play a little game called Survive the Wireless Design Jungle. Okay, we have to start with our little game piece. First stop, Micro Mountain. Look out for that data sheet dungeon. You can waste a lot of time there. Next up, Connectivity Canyon. Yeah, navigating here can be a little tricky sometimes. And finally, Security Station. Be careful what you roll, because if you don't roll just the right number, you might be there for a while. <laughs> okay, maybe not all wireless designs feel like you're running around in circles in carefully crafted board game spaces. Maybe that's just me. But keeping your bomb requirements, connectivity options, and security protocols in mind when you're working on a wireless design can be quite daunting. Wouldn't it be nice if it was all done for you and no dice were involved at all? Hi, I'm Amelia Dalton, host of Chalk Talk. In this episode, Chris Artis from Maxim Integrated and I check out Maxim's new wireless member of the Darwin microcontroller family. We take a closer look at the details of its Bluetooth-based connectivity, why it will lend itself to smarter applications, and how it can replace multiple microcontrollers in your next wireless design. And before we get started, don't forget to click that link. There you can find even more information about this topic from Maxim Integrated. Hi, Chris. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you, Amelia. Okay, in a previous Chalk Talk, we talked about Maxim's family of low-powered micros. You guys are moving into wireless now, so why did you decide to do this? So, Amelia, if we look at the trends in our markets and some of the things that our customers are asking us to do, there's a lot of similarities to the story we talked about before with the Darwin family. Everybody wants more performance. They want their devices to do more things, but they want the battery to last longer. And they're starting to get worried about security. They're really starting to realize there's some bad actors out there, and maybe that's something they should worry about. It also still needs to be small because nobody wants bigger things. They want smaller things. But the other thing that is very consistent is all these things need to talk. They all need a way to get their data to the cloud so you can see it on your phone or so it can be used for further analysis. So not only does it need to be smaller, last longer, be more secure, but it's also got to chat too. So what is Maxim doing to address those needs? So we just introduced a new family of low-power Darwin microcontrollers that include Bluetooth. And they address all these trends in various ways. So let's talk about smarter applications first. So this family actually has up to two Cortex M4F cores operating at about 100 megahertz. They also integrate a lot of really neat high-performance peripherals, things like USB high-speed, SD card, high-speed SPI, high-speed I2C, as well as a smarter DMA that goes above and beyond your typical DMA. We're also enabling smaller end products through multiple ways. One, because we've got two Cortex M4F cores and another core that I'll talk about in a second, you can actually replace multiple ICs, multiple microcontrollers in your end board and still get the same type of processing performance with lower power. We also offer this thing in a very small wafer level package, around four milliliters on the side. So it's not going to take up very much space on the board. Plus, we pack in plenty of memory into the device so that those end products can stay small. To address the security concerns of all these new bad actors, we've also integrated very high-performance security IP in these devices. Maxim has a long history in providing secure solutions to the financial payment industry, where companies like Visa really care strongly about how secure the data is. We take some of that IP and we put it into this family of products for the IoT. And these are going to be things like AES encryption, SHA hashing, DES and triple DES encryption, elliptic curve cryptography, RSA, all that alphabet soup of stuff that's really the building blocks for the secure internet. We also provide ways for customers to build things with longer battery life. Our active mode power is super great in this part. We have a built-in, highly efficient DC-DC regulator, Maxim Simo technology, as well as we make sure that our power when we're asleep is really good. And then the new features. We've got a Bluetooth 5 engine in this device. We've got very low transmit and receive current, and we really built a system that is lower power across the board in, in lots of different types of scenarios and connectivity profiles. One other neat feature here is that there is a separate microcontroller core, proprietary core, aside from the two Cortex M4F cores that runs the Bluetooth stack. What that means is that a customer doesn't have to burn one of those Cortex M4F cores doing Bluetooth. 
They can use those cores to do whatever they want. Maybe one of them is going to run health algorithms while the other one manages the network connection to a hospital, something like that. So people can build their devices, build their applications without worrying too much about how the Bluetooth core is going to interfere with the main microcontroller core. Cool. Can we take a look at this under the hood? Absolutely. So here we've got the block diagram for the part. I think I touched on most of these features already. You can see the two Cortex-M4F cores, about 100 megahertz. You see a typical DMA. You see a smart DMA, which is like a typical DMA on steroids. It can actually make some decisions, be somewhat programmatic in what it decides to do so you don't have to wake up the more power-hungry Cortex cores. Something I didn't mention was all of the access to both a big, generous internal memory and the external memories. If one meg flash isn't enough for you, you can pop external memories on there and essentially have unlimited memory space to execute from. I also didn't talk about error correction on the memories. Both the flash and the SRAM have optional error correction where we can detect a single bit error and correct it on the fly, or we can detect a double bit error, which is exceedingly rare, but the single bit errors do happen from time to time depending on your environment. This means you can build very robust and reliable applications without worrying so much about alpha particles or other noisy types of things happening and messing with your memories. This looks like an impressive part with a lot of different features. Are you able to find actual homes for it or is it too big or over-designed? It's certainly bigger than most of the other things on the market. And I'll get to that in a second where we stand out. But we find that a lot of applications today are demanding more performance. They've already got a modem in the part. They've already got one or two microcontrollers. And that's really where this part makes a difference, improving the size and the power and the cost for those applications. So we're actually seeing lots of good engagements in things like ECG patches, where there's a lot of processing requirements, as well as connectivity. Smart clothing is another area where there's a lot of different sensors to monitor and algorithms to run, as well as communications. So we do see where things are getting more and more complex. Certainly they're not sitting on the wall, burping out of the temperature every hour. They are actually doing real processing at the edge. And that's where we're finding the best opportunities. So you're obviously competing in this space with a lot of other companies doing Bluetooth solutions. So what makes what you guys are doing special? So you're right. There's lots of other Bluetooth guys out there. And this part is not anything like what any of them have. There's nothing out there with two undedicated 96 megahertz Cortex-M4F cores. That's a lot of processing horsepower. You can throw a lot of interesting problems. There's none with high reliability memory with the error correction so that you can be sure that these devices that get implanted or they're going to sit on their own for years, that they're not going to have failures later on down the road. You don't see anything else out there with all these high-speed peripherals. USB high-speed is a 480 megabit way to get data on and off the part. SD card controller is a 240 megabit way to get data on and off the part. The SPI and the I2C are much higher than typical rates for those devices as well. So you got a lot of ways to get data on and off super efficiently. And then you don't see anything with this much memory and the capability of going beyond that. Plus, as a bonus, it's also pretty low power. So this family, the, these four parts really allow designers to potentially merge multiple chips into a single chip solution or just build more and more complex applications from what they've got today. So you mentioned four parts. Can we take a look at those? Sure. So we realize not everybody wants the Cadillac. Yeah, sometimes you want to get a Kia also. And also, you know, we see people who say, you know what, I'm not sold that there's bad guys out there yet, so I don't want the secure part. But we know that they're going to come back later and say, uh, you know what, sorry, I was wrong. And so we've got a nice, easy upgrade path for them once they realize that the eh, world's not always a super nice place. All right. I think I'm ready to get started. What would I do first? So first, you know, we've got a couple different evaluation kits. A bigger one called the Eevee kit and then a smaller one that's a feather form factor. Super nice, tiny. You plug it into a breadboard. So either one of these is a great starting point. And then we're supported by typical tools that you're probably already using. Excellent. Well, I think that's all I have time for today. Thank you so much for joining me. And before we go, you didn't forget to click that link, did you? There you can find even more information about this topic from Maxim Integrated. For Chalk Talks, I'm Amelia Dalton from eejournal.com. For more Chalk Talks, head on over to the Chalk Talks section of EE Journal. You can't miss it. It's right across the top. Or head on over to YouTube, youtube.com slash eejournal.